Face here back with another reaction video. This time I'm reacting to Ninja and Shinobi What is the Truth? History of Japan by Kings and Generals. You don't, when it comes to Japanese history, people don't talk about this a lot, Ninja and Shinobi, unless it's something to do with anime or TV series, but mostly anime and other types of media. But, um, if you know, you know. But, um, so I thought this would be something a little bit different about, you know, ja a little bit of Japanese history that doesn't get talked about a lot in documentaries. Well, not not that I've seen, anyway. If you know any that, feel free to t say, put it in the comments. Sorry, a bit of congestion there. Um, yeah, well... The usual disclaimer when I react to any historical content, if I don't show so much what's considered a proper reaction, it is probably obvious I don't know much about the subject at hand, and if I do know anything, I'll most likely pause the video to give my input or ask any curious questions, which hopefully will be answered in the comments. So, the link to the original video will be in the description down below. Please go and subscribe to Kings and Generals, an, an amazing history channel here on YouTube amongst looks a fair few and um yeah there's not much i can really say and uh since this is under 20 minutes so um this shouldn't take too long so let's get this up on screen captions on subtitles and here we go <laughs> Hiroyuki came out of the kitchen's back door and took a path that would take him to a secret pigeon coop he had for contacting his lord thousands of miles away. He had embedded himself in the local daimyo's servants so many years ago that he sometimes almost forgot his true allegiance. Yeah. Surprising how much one can learn even from such a humble position as that of a cook, he thought, as he made his way to the tree line. He then stopped and looked back to make sure he wasn't followed. Nobody. Yet he could not shake off the feeling that someone had been watching him. He decided to trust his gut feeling, and That's instead of heading feeling. into the forest, he took the other turn and made his way towards the beach. Nobody would suspect a cook that went fishing, not even the most paranoid mind. Espionage was part of Japan's tumultuous Sengoku Jidai era, uh, just was... as it had been during any other period in history, and played a... Yeah, I was I was right. It was through the Sengoku Jidai. But also, bearing in mind, years ago, I used to play, and I was very crap at it, Shogun Total War. And I was so bad at it, I'd lose even some of the, what pros would say, some of the easiest battles, because I was not that good at strategy. And using the ninjas sometimes i i had a very la a ver i was very lacking of common sense where most like 80 percent of my nin missions that i sent ninjas and assassins on failed even if i thought they were going to be successful but anyway yeah bear in mind Assassins have been around since even before the Sengoku Jedi. Well, assassin, from what I remember, comes from the Arabic word Hashashin. But I'm not going to go into full details of that. You can feel free to look that up yourself. Significant role in a daimyo's success in battle. Today, we will discuss some common myths regarding ninjas and the reality of the shinobi as scouts and spies and their interaction with the samurai. This video has been made in partnership with our friends at Ubisoft and their new game, Assassin's Creed Shadows. Yes, you've heard it right. Yep. After years of fans requesting it, Assassin's Creed is going to Japan for the first mm -hmm. time. Take control of the unlikely duo, Shinobi Nawe and the legendary samurai Yasuke during the Sengoku Jidai era as the warring clans led... That I am looking forward to. 
first I gotta I, I've really gotta get get my ass in gear and complete Valhalla, get and complete Mirage, and then hopefully if I can afford it, get get Assassin's Creed Shadows. And yes, I've heard the backlash. I've heard and read the backlash because, ooh, why have they got a black guy in Japan? For those who haven't even bothered to look up any sort of Japanese history, Yasuke, the, even though he was a technically a retainer, he was real. By Daimyo, thrust Japan into a state of constant wars, forcing our heroes to take the fate of the country yep. into their hands. With many historical characters and an epic period of history brought to life, Assassin's Creed Shadows is shaping up to be a perfect game for history buffs. Watch the full trailer in the link in the description now. So, who were the ninjas and shinobi, and how did they interact with the world of the samurai? What are some of the myths and what is the reality? The easiest myth to debunk, for obvious reasons, is that of ninjutsu magic. The image of the ninja biting a scroll and doing a series of hand seals must be very familiar among anime watchers. Yep. Using this Taoist magic, the Kujikiri, the ninja is able to vanish into thin air, teleport, summon clones and spirits. The list of abilities goes on and on. Yep. This myth was not only propagated by the commoners, who sought to explain the almost mystical abilities of the shinobi to infiltrate and escape secretly but from the ninjas themselves as a form of psychological warfare. Creating an aura of invincibility to dissuade anyone from trying to uncover them or fight them and spread fear among their enemies. Needless to say, no matter how many hand signs you try, you will not create shadow clones of yourself, but you might end up insulting someone. Wow. Another popular myth is the all-black attire. It is the most common depiction of a ninja, especially in Western media. But sadly, this iconic outfit is unlikely to have been used in real life. For starters, ninjas as spies would need to blend in yeah. with the local population, something that would be unbelievably impossible if they walked around dressed in the most conspicuous outfit imaginable. Even if you think that this stealth uniform would be ideal for nighttime raids, there is also one more thing to consider, the cost. Black was a more expensive color to achieve with natural dyes, adding significantly yep. to the color of black clothes in medieval times, mm. while also creating a weird reflection of the moonlight. So dark blue clothes would be a better and cheaper option if anyone wanted a sneaking suit. As for the black outfit itself, nobody knows with certainty, but there is a theory that it might have originated from Kabuki theater, where stagehands wear all black suits as a way of telling the audience to ignore them as they are not characters of the play and therefore invisible. So for early Japanese iconographers, it would have been an easy way to tell their audience, who was already accustomed to Kabuki, that the character is a ninja, a person invisible to the other characters, by sketching him as a Kabuki stagehand. So while it's not entirely impossible for the ninja to have used a black outfit, meaning a kimono and hakama, that is, we would... I would... Now I now I get the idea that it would be ideal to use a very dark blue dye because it's cheaper. But also that you would only I can you can see why you would use that for only nighttime raids because like even assassins in different parts of the world, the common sense was you want to blend in. Say that it was improbable. Sorry, I, I had something else, but I've forgotten. As you can see from the Assassin's Creed Shadows trailer, Naue is actually wearing practical clothes, mm. making it easy to blend in with the crowds. Moving on to another easy-to-tackle myth, the Ninjato. For those who don't know, the Ninjato is the straight blade short sword with the iconic mm. rectangular or square tsuba that ninja mm. usually carry on their backs. But is it real? While straight-bladed swords have existed in Japanese history, unfortunately for our ninja enthusiasts, that doesn't seem to be the case for Ninjato, as there is no physical historical evidence that supports their existence. It also falls into the same fallacy as with the all-black karate uniform, meaning that the ninja would be easily identifiable by carrying around a sword that is different from everyone else's. Yeah. 
Another prevalent misconception is that ninja were highly trained assassins. Now that doesn't mean that a ninja couldn't kill someone, but they were not graduates of the John Wick school of assassination either. It all depended on the skills of the person in question and the circumstances. A ninja could kill, but he wasn't solely trained to be the killing machine Hollywood would want us to believe. Even historical records don't really help clear up the picture, since some high-profile deaths or assassination attempts have been hastily attributed to ninja, with no regard to whether that person actually was one or just a hired assassin. For example, the death of one of the most powerful daimyo of the Sengoku era, Usugi Kenshin, has been traditionally rumoured to be the work of a ninja, who snuck under the daimyo's lavatory and killed him by thrusting a spear or sword into the poor man's nether regions. Oh. While an entertaining story, this incident is very likely entirely fictional. Usugi Kenshin is known to have suffered for years with abdominal problems indicating a chronic disease, probably stomach or esophageal cancer, a result of his heavy drinking habit. Another famous incident is Sugitani Zenjibo's attempt to assassinate Oda Nobunaga in 1570, following the orders of the Rokaku clan's daimyo Yoshikata. The expert marksman set up his ambush at Chikusa Pass and fired two shots from his tepo gun, only for the Oda warlord's armor to block the bullets, leaving Nobunaga unharmed. Zenjibo would later be captured and executed at Gifu Castle. While there are theories that Zenjibo was a ninja of Koga's clans, we can only be certain that he was a skilled shooter, as attempts at assassination using firearms during that time were rare. So ninjas were not the godlike assassins we have seen so yeah. often in modern day media, but what exactly were they? Their missions varied from individual to individual, depending on their skills and position. But most often, shinobi were used as scouts for armies, either keeping watch for incoming <coughs> enemies or sent ahead to explore the land and the enemy's camp. That makes sense. The role of spy and spy master was also one that was often relegated to them, either to establish intelligence networks or covertly infiltrate the court and army of a rival daimyo. On rare occasions, shinobi would be used to perform raids, sabotage, and if the occasion arose, an assassination. A large part of their work meant that they had to be behind enemy lines and move around undetected. They achieved this by employing a variety of disguises that allowed them to mingle with the local population, yeah. such as farmers, or in case it was harder to pass as a local, they could at least pass as trustworthy outsiders, like merchants or Buddhist monks. In any case, they would wear clothes that wouldn't make them stand out from the crowd. Yeah. Those who would infiltrate a position using stealth instead of gaining the enemy's trust mm. were expected to have received combat training and mm. to be adept at using tools like climbing spikes, ropes and grappling hooks. Yet perhaps the greatest myth about ninja is their rivalry with the samurai. Mm. We all know the story, right? Our hero, the ninja, has to defeat the evil samurai who oppressed the villagers wow. or wiped out his clan. But this rivalry is not true, not entirely. For starters, a ninja, or to be more precise with the terms, shinobi no mono, was a profession, while samurai was a social class. In fact, many samurai found employment as shinobi, since they had the necessary skills to be scouts, spies and saboteurs. There is no greater testament to this than the fact that the most famous shinobi of the era, Hattori Hanzo, who worked for the future shogun Tokugawa Ieyasu, was a samurai. Needless to say, shinobi worked for the various daimyos of the land. So their employers and comrades in the Lord's armies de facto belonged to the bushy class. So it was not uncommon for shinobi, who, even if they weren't themselves members of the samurai caste, to work side by side with the social elite of Japan, oftentimes led by them during raids. However, there is also a smidge of truth in this trope. There is a possibility that this myth originates from real events that occurred during the Sengoku era, the vicious war between the Oda clan and the eager Koka alliance. We don't know the full story yet, but the trailer for Assassin's Creed Shadows clearly shows the camaraderie of a shinobi and a samurai working together and employing their respective skill sets. When one imagines a typical Japanese province of the Sengoku era, a local lord, the daimyo, comes to mind as the absolute ruler of the land. But that wasn't the case everywhere. There were some attempts at a more collective form of governance. We wouldn't actually call it a democracy, more of an oligarchy, as power and decision-making rested upon the leaders of peasant warriors, Jisamurai families, 
and village elders that represented the commoners, but it definitely wasn't the despotic rule of a lord. Such was the case in Iga and Koka, where the commoners frankly had enough of authoritarian rule and in the late 15th century formed a collective in which soon all the villages of Iga would participate, while the idea would also spread into the neighbouring Koka province. In 1560, the confederation would even create a primitive form of a constitution, which formalised the alliance between the two leagues, the Iga Iki and the Koka Iki. Their friendship extended to the daimyo of Umi province, most notably the Rakaku clan, but when the latter came into conflict with the rising star of the Oda, they also <coughs> dragged the two Iki into the war. The Koka Iki fell with the Rokaku in 1574, with Nobunaga incorporating the famed warriors of the province into his armies. Iga, having natural defences in the form of mountains, and thereby being more easily defendable, was able to withstand Oda's expansion for longer. In 1579, Nobunaga's son, Nobukatsu, invaded the province with around 11,000 men. This campaign, however, wouldn't be the walk in the park he had dreamed of. The men of Iga were hardened warriors, extremely skilled in guerrilla warfare tactics, and, more importantly, determined to defend their way of life. By constantly harassing the Oda troops with hit-and-run tactics and night raids, they were eventually able to drive off Nobukatsu's invading force. But this was not the end, and eventually the Oda clan would have the last word. Two years later, Nobunaga himself, at the head of 42,000 men, invaded Iga from multiple directions. Despite facing fierce resistance, Nobunaga was successful, with his men leaving behind only ashes. But while the Iga Sokoku Iki didn't survive, the legacy of its people did. The Iga Jizemurai's masterful guerrilla warfare tactics gave birth to the mythical aspect of the shinobi, who became ah. masters of stealth, and of course, their conflict with Nobunaga might have seeded the ninja versus samurai trope. We will likely learn about the story of Assassin's Creed Shadows in the coming months, but so far, it seems that Naue might be set on the warpath because of some of these real historical events. As we have seen, Iga and Koka were hotbeds that produced what we would call shinobi, Men professionally trained in the arts of scouting, espionage and sabotage. It's no surprise then that the most famous shinobi of all time comes from Iga, Hattori Hanso. Wow. Nicknamed Demon Hanso for his daring tactics, he was born around the year 1542 in Mikawa, as his father was working for the local Tokugawa clan, and young Hanso would in time also serve Lord Ieyasu faithfully. In his long service to the future shogun, two events stand out. The first was in the aftermath of the destructive Battle of Mikatagahara, where the Takeda forces swept away Ieyasu's troops, but the day was saved partially thanks to Hanzo's counterattack at the head of just 30 men, which delayed Takeda forces, or so the legend says. But by far his most brilliant moment came in 1582, when he saved Ieyasu's life and possibly changed the history of all Japan. It was during that fateful night when Akechi Mitsuhide betrayed and slew his master, Odu Nobunaga, at Honoji. To Slightly off topic, but do do anyone from Japan actually curse the name of Akechi Mits Mitsuhide for betraying Odu Nobunaga? Or, or is there... Was there any disdain for Oda and Nobunaga? Just a curious question if someone can answer that in the comments. Tokugawa Ieyasu, who had visited Nobunaga in the previous days, mm. found himself trapped behind enemy lines in Sakai. But thanks to his trusty retainer and the connections Hanzo still had in Iga, Ieyasu and his small band of bodyguards were able to cross through the province, sometimes barely escaping their pursuers, and finally making their way to Mikawa. Hattori Hanzo would continue to serve the Tokugawa clan loyally until his death in 1597. As for the cause, mm -hmm. multiple theories exist, ranging from natural death and illness to an enemy shinobi, and even Hanzo okay. abandoning his life as a samurai to become a monk. Mm. The aforementioned assassination at Honoji is also an important point in the life of our other protagonist, the legendary samurai Yasuke. 
Unfortunately, yeah. historical records are lost, mm. and we don't know what happened to Yasuke after the assassination of his master, Oda Nobunaga. But one can infer from other similar cases that such a betrayal would lead a now masterless yeah. samurai to seek revenge. Speaking of famous shinobi, we shouldn't skip... To be fair, after Yasuke, which his name was given to him by Nobunaga, that, um... After... After he was given back to the Portuguese um, missionaries, the Jesuits, all historical records about him vanish. So he probably died as a slave to the Portuguese Jesuits, which is a shame. But anyway, let's just get back to this. The Sanada Ten Braves and their leader, a name we are sure you are very acquainted with, Saratobi Sasuke. Okay. The Ten Braves were a group of ninjas led by Sasuke that fought during the siege of Osaka, supporting Sanada Yukimura. While their story is very entertaining, mm -hmm. it is also, sadly, entirely fictional. Yeah. The folklore surrounding Sasuke and the Ten Braves has largely contributed to some of the common myths surrounding ninjas yeah. today. From guerrilla fighters, scouts and spies, to folklore superhuman heroes and deadly assassins, the ninja today is a word everyone is familiar with. They are heroes of popular culture that can be seen in movies, series, manga, oh, yes. anime and video games. They bear almost no resemblance to their historical... Especially for Naruto fans. I gotta get back to watching that at some point. ...origins, other than the name. Today, the ninja uses magic, dressed in black, and is an unbeatable martial artist. But there was a time... There was a thing I should have said earlier, like, um, maybe when people have talked about, you know, like these mysterious shadow clones of ninja, could that be down to some form of gas, like a hallucinogenic, making people see multiple of the same person? Because to me, that sounds like a possibility, but anyway. Time when real men hid in the shadows or even in plain sight saw and heard things they were not supposed to, and yep. changed the outcome of entire battles with just a few words. We will talk about the... Well, like they say with uh, assassins across the globe sometimes, hiding in plain sight can be just as effective as hiding in the shadows. But anyway... History of Japan more in the coming months, so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing. It helps immensely. Recently, we have started releasing weekly patron and YouTube. Okay, that's it. And that'll do it. This has been an interesting video. And I'm glad there's some, some clearing up of the myth of uh, ninjas and shinobi. At least, at least that has been cleared up. And I've only just realized it's getting darker. And I've only got, I haven't got my main light on, I've only got my desk lamp. So, um, well, it's, um, it's brilliant timing to, uh, to end this reaction. So if you like this reaction, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.